Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is handling of complaint files in pharmaceutical manufacturing. The intent of pharmaceutical manufacturing is definitely to produce a good product that meets the requirements always. But in case of any complaints, how it should be handled is important. In today's video, let us see the basic regulatory requirements from various guidelines. 21 CFR Part 211.198 Written procedures describing the handling of all written and oral complaints regarding a drug product shall be established and followed. Let us start with the 21 CFR guidelines. As a basic GMP requirement, it is necessary to have a detailed written procedure for handling any complaints from the market on the quality of the product. Some customers may not communicate through a written complaint note. It may be informed verbally over the phone. So for any complaints oral or written should be logged in. Such procedures shall include provisions for review by the quality control unit of any complaint involving possible failure of a drug product to meet any of its specifications and for such drug products a determination as to the need for an investigation in accordance with section 211.192. There should be a provision in the procedure to involve quality units. Here it should be understood that QA or QC or both will review the complaint received. Investigation as per 211.192 includes review of any unexpected discrepancy or failure of the batch or any of its components. Such procedures shall include provisions for review to determine whether the complaint represents a serious and unexpected adverse drug experience which is required to be reported to the Food and Drug Administration in accordance with sections 310.305 and 511.80 80 of this chapter. Section 310.305 prescribes that any of the marketed prescription drug product manufacturer must report to FDA each adverse drug experience received as soon as possible, but no later than 15 calendar days. The details of reporting requirements are discussed in the sections adequately. Section 514.80 is for veterinary drugs reporting requirements. A written record of each complaint shall be maintained in a file designated for drug product complaints. Anything not recorded is considered as not done as per basic GMP. The file regarding such drug product complaint shall be maintained at the establishment where the drug product involved was manufactured, processed or packed or such file may be maintained at another facility if the written records in such files are readily available for inspection at the other facility. Since the marketing department is mostly stationed at head office and not at the manufacturing site, many companies have the complaint files with them in the corporate office. However, it is recommended that a copy of the complaint file may be retained at the manufacturing location itself for easy and quick retrieval of data for any review. Written records involving a drug product 
shall be maintained until at least one year after the expiration date of the drug product or one year after the date that the complaint was received, whichever is longer. In the case of certain OTC drug products lacking expiration dating, because they meet the criteria for exemption under section 211.137, such written records shall be maintained for three years after the distribution of the drug product. This is the requirement, expiry plus one year or one year after receiving the complaint for archiving the complaint files. For OTC drugs, it is three years after the distribution of the product. The written record shall include the following information where known, the name and strength of the drug product, lot number, name of the complainant, nature of the complaint, and reply to the complainant. This information is necessary to track the complaint. Replying to the customer may not happen immediately. Depending upon the seriousness of the complaint and the time taken for investigation and COPPA, the final report may take longer, but it is necessary to respond within 24 hours that the complaint is acknowledged and show the manufacturer commitment and seriousness on the complaint to resolve. This will make the customer comfortable on the commitment of the manufacturer. Where an investigation under section 211.192 is conducted, the written record shall include the findings of the investigation and follow up. The record or copy of the record of the investigation shall be maintained at the establishment where the investigation occurred in accordance with section 211.180C. As discussed in the second bullet of the previous slide, a copy of the detailed investigation report may be archived at the site where the product was manufactured. Section 211.180C also prescribes the same requirement. Where an investigation under Section 211.192 is not conducted, the written record shall include the reason that an investigation was found to be not necessary and the name of the responsible person making such a determination. If the product is returned for other reason than the quality issue and the preliminary investigation, it was found that there was no adverse impact on the quality of the product, the labels, seals are intact, return under proper recommended storage conditions, detailed investigation may not be required. But all this detailed information and the person responsible for taking such decision should be recorded. Let us see the prescription of ICH Q7. 1510 says, all quality related complaints whether received orally or in writing, should be recorded and investigated according to a written procedure. So, Section 15.10 of ICH Q7 also prescribes the same basic requirement. 15.11 says, complaint record should include name and address of the complainant, name and where appropriate title and phone number of the person submitting the complaint, complaint nature including the name and the batch number of API, date complaint is received, action initially taken including dates and identity of the person taking the action, any follow-up action taken, response provided to the originator of the complaint including the date response sent and final decision on intermediate or API batch or lot. Information in this section is similar to the section 21 CFR part 211.198. Action initially taken should include an immediate response to the customer 
to show the seriousness of the manufacturer's commitment to resolve the complaint in the initial response it may be committed on timelines that would take for investigation and necessary kappa the information on the appropriate persons who are handling the complaint and who is going to give the response are also important to be communicated to the customer section 15.12 says records of complaints should be retained in order to evaluate trends product related frequencies and severity with a view to taking additional and if appropriate immediate corrective action this section has additional requirements to trend the market complaints in annual product reviews for any potential improvements in the market complaint handling system and procedures 15.13 there should be a written procedure that defines the circumstances under which a recall of an intermediate or api should be considered section 15.13 has a special clause on recalls this is an implied requirement in 21 cfr guidelines 15.14 says the recall procedure should designate who should be involved in evaluating the information how a recall should be initiated who should be informed about the recall and how the recalled material should be treated this section is important the recall procedure is not really a product recall activity it is to establish that how fast the recall could be executed from the farthest customer so a mock drill should be executed that involves a fabricated product recall the recall information should be sent across to all the distributors and customers the time taken for the response from the farthest distributor or the customer should be monitored obviously if the recall information reaches the farthest customer the product can be withheld immediately for further action to send back to the manufacturer i hope that this point is understood well 15.15 says in the event of a serious potential potentially life threatening situation local national and or international authorities should be informed and their advice sought the prescription in the section 15.15 is same as in sections 310.305 and 514.80 of 21 cfr sections let us see the prescription under drugs and cosmetics rules 1945 28 complaints and adverse reactions in these sections it is titled as complaints and adverse reactions under section 28 of schedule m 28.1 says all complaints thereof concerning product quality shall be carefully reviewed and recorded according to written procedures each complaint shall be investigated evaluated by the designated personnel of the company and records of the investigation and remedial action taken thereof shall be maintained this section has similar information as in the guidelines explained above 28.2 says reports of serious adverse drug reactions resulting from the use of a drug along with comments and documents shall be forthwith reported to the concerned licensing authority the prescription in section 28.2 is same as in sections 310.305 and 514.80 of 21 cfr sections 28.3 there shall be written procedures describing the action to be taken recall to be made of the defective product 
this section has same information as in section 15.14 of ICH Q7. Other important points to note are market returns without any quality failure reasons also must be recorded as a complaint. In certain circumstances, where the customer has changed the production plan and does not need the product at that point of time, the customer may want to return the product. This also should be logged into a complaint register. But the conditions of the return material does not pose any risk to the product quality. It may be salvaged in an appropriate manner. Technically, it may not be considered as a complaint. Internal rejections within the same organization but at a different location also should be considered as complaint. This is important. If the product fails in another location, it should be logged in complaint file and resolved after a thorough investigation. I hope that the information in this video is useful to understand the requirements for complaint handling. Check your complaint handling system against these prescriptions and make a comprehensive system for handling of market complaints. Also, try to understand the various references made for more detailed information. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe like and share also please leave a message in the comments box for any further support thank you